Most of you heard about ChatGPT at this point, and I assume many of you have already tried this AI tool. I've been using it basically since its official release, and while I'm not using it like every day or something, I use it on a pretty regular basis to get new ideas for writing ads or just some general ideas for some of my client accounts. And in this video, I wanna show you five ways to use ChatGPT in your Google Ads account, whether you do it for yourself or for clients. Some of these ways basically might be pretty straightforward and simple. Others you may not have thought of. So without any further ado, let's jump into ChatGPT. I will minimize myself so that you can see the tool in all its glory. Yeah, I think that's probably a good position over here. So five ways you can use ChatGPT, right? This is the free version. At this point, it is possible to upgrade to ChatGPT Plus in Germany. I assume in many, many other countries as well. Previously, they had it just for the US. I didn't upgrade yet, even though I probably will. As I said, I'm not using it too often anymore at this point. I probably use it like once or twice a week and just for some very simple things. But let me get started with the first point that is also the most straightforward. And this is use it for ad copy inspirations. Now, let's assume you sell a everyday product, right? Let's say you sell, I don't know, some like sneakers for men, right? You could ask ChatGPT to help you write ad copy for your products. So let's say something like write five Google ads headlines for my sneakers store for men or actually for my let's say sneakers for men that's probably better by the way you don't have to write properly in like capital letters and everything i just for some reason do it don't know why so here we have five examples elevate your style with our premium men's sneakers step up your game with our stylish men's sneakers the first thing you will notice is how ChatGPT always keeps a fairly similar structure, right? It uses different words and those sound pretty good, like discover the perfect pair, upgrade your footwear, elevate your style. This is pretty good stuff, pretty good marketing talk, right? But you see how it's always very similar. Like you see how basically there are different elements that are being reused, but simply in a different way. I'm not saying that this is bad, but this is just something that you will probably see over and over again when you keep using the tool. You have to be very creative with the inputs and the prompts you're making with the tool. The other thing that you immediately realize probably is that those are way too long. Like with Google Ads, you're limited to 30 characters in your headline and ChatGPT does not, does not now uh, know, sorry, does, doesn't know how to properly use character length, right? And how to properly stay below that. So if I say, please stay below 30 characters, it won't do it. Like most of the time, at least. This one sounds about or seems about right, Comfortable man's sneakers seems a bit too long to me. Like come for yeah, that's definitely too long, right? With the with the with, with the white space, that's much better already. I assume that probably all besides the third, maybe the first are um, fine, but it just does doesn't know how to do that all the time, and that's still somewhat of an issue. So you can say make them shorter or something like that, and typically it will shorten and shorten and shorten it. But the point is, to, at this point, you cannot really go ahead and just copy paste. You have to trim them, you have to change them. However, the main way I use that basically is just to get some ideas. I never could just go ahead and straightforward copy paste chat GPT sort of results into my client's accounts. I just use it to get some new ideas, some new ad angle, right? Basically talk about a feature or a benefit that I never really thought of. And this is very helpful if I sort of have to write 20 different ads for different categories. And at some point I keep repeating myself to some degree and I get some new ideas, I put them in and that just works much, much better. So you can use it for inspiration and ideas, but it's not writing all the ad copy for you, especially if you want to test different angles and so on and so forth. Because in the end, if you want to do it properly, then you would have to spend so much time in ChatGPT that you may as well just, you know, write the copy yourself if you are good at writing ad copy, of course. The second point is giving um, or, or let ChatGPT give you keywords and potentially even negative keywords. So let's do the same thing and say, give me 10 keywords for my sneakers, right? And here now we have to be a bit more careful because of course you wanna describe the product better. If you have, for example, give me 10 keywords for my crocodile leather boots for men, 
right? Something pretty specific and expensive. Let's see if ChatGPT, there we go. They It already realizes that, you know, cro crocodile leather is probably a pretty expensive thing. I don't have a client selling it, but if you sold something like that, something unique, you see that it kind of realizes, okay, must be expensive, it uses things like luxury, but you have to describe it very well if you wanna actually get keywords that make sense. Else it might just give you a whole ton of very broad sort of keywords, right? Here, for example, you have durable sole, not necessarily a keyword that fits this, this uh, description. If you just say like sneakers for men, some of them might not actually be right. But if you describe it very well, it can give you some keywords. But here again, if you use the keyword planner and you do it properly, it doesn't necessarily give you a huge advantage. But if you really describe the product very well, you use it that way, you then modify it, it can be a nice additional source of keywords um, and that can just fuel your account with some new ideas, basically. If you then say, give me 10 typical negative keywords for my sneakers. Let's see what the first things are. Use, cheap, yeah, you know, the classics, right? Fake, knockoff, imitation. Of course, it's much more difficult for, for ChatGPT to think about negative keywords because ChatGPT doesn't know what all the different search queries might look like that people enter into Google. I mean, if I sell a product and then I look into my search term report and there are like 50,000 results, many of them are pretty surprising. So obviously ChatGPT doesn't know about them, but it's still interesting to see which ideas the tool basically comes up with. And therefore you can just use it to give it a try and see if you can get any inspiration from it again. You see, it's a lot about inspiration versus just letting it do all the work for you. Next up, we have ideas for structuring accounts. This is probably a bit more unusual, and that's something that I do not really use myself, but let's say you're an absolute beginner and you have no idea where to put your money to. Let's say, for example, I don't know, the store here has a, has a monthly budget of $10,000, right? Um, give me a good account structure for my mail sneaker store if I want to spend $10,000 thousand a month on Google Ads. You could further restrict it. <clears throat> if you say, for example, I don't want to use display, I don't want to use search or something, you can of course do that and it will ignore those. Also, it doesn't know performance max yet, right? It is only fed with data up to, to uh, 2021. So Pmax wasn't a thing and it means it cannot really tell you how to exactly put together a performance max campaign and so on and so forth. I assume this will probably come soon, but right now it can only tell you about all the others like shopping, search. It knows about responsive search ads, about, it knows about the match types, even though occasionally it tells me to use broad match modifier key, uh, as, as a match type, right? Which is still a bit weird but basically here you can see campaigns brand campaign product campaigns remarketing seasonal or holiday campaigns which is a fairly good point and then it talks about the ad groups the keywords what to use so it's pretty pretty good and pretty advanced and telling you roughly what to do of course you could now say something like suggest suggest a good budget split for all the different campaigns this is now again a very broad query but let's see such as the goals of your business, the competitiveness of your industry and the performance of your campaigns. So However, here's the split brand campaign. Tend to, that's quite a lot, right? 10, 20%. I know many brands do that, but still, especially like the 20% is certainly on the upper range. Like you shouldn't necessarily spend more than that except for special cases. Product campaigns though seems pretty much right. Remarketing is again, a bit too high or quite a bit too high, I would say. Also, there is sort of the classical, typical search really lacking until uh, or unless basically ChatGPT thinks that the brand campaign could also be fueled with like non-branded keywords, right? So if you, for example, resell other brands, but all in all, that's a somewhat decent split, even though I certainly wouldn't copy it um, just like that. The thing is that you still have to monitor yourself. And this is here, this last sentence, right? It says continuously monitor and optimize your campaigns to ensure you're getting the best return on investment. That's the point that it cannot do for you. So it can recommend a split that makes somewhat sense. But if you look at this last sentence here, continuously monitor and optimize based on the results, that is of course the hard part. Setting it up once, yes, that's work and you have to still think about it. And of course you have to make it detailed and everything, 
but optimizing it based on real data and knowing when to pause, when to change, when to increase your bids, when to change your bidding strategy, which negatives to use, how to split your ads, which angles, etc. All of that is like a huge part of optimization. And that's where you also see some of the limitations. Like technically you could tell JetGPT like, hey, these are my results and these are my CPCs, et cetera, et cetera. And it may come up with some ideas, but the moment it gets like super complex, it cannot really help you with that, but it can point you in the right direction with many of these specific queries and again, inspiration. Let's look at a fourth one, and this one is pretty interesting, and I'm sure most of you are not too familiar with Google Ads Scripts, right? Google Ads Scripts are basically a way of automating parts of your account. Adding a script allows you to, for example, get special reporting or to let Google Ads do certain things for you. For example, you could have a, uh, have a script um, where you put a bunch of stuff in, you have to code that, I cannot do that myself, right? But you can actually let ChatGPT do that. So for example, it could write a Google Ads script that says, um, write a Google, sorry, Google Ads script. What's going on here? Write a Google Ads script that automatically pauses underperforming ads every 14 days, right? And now, perfect, it doesn't do that yet, but typically if something like that happens, you just have to refresh and then uh, try it again. So let's see, this should actually work. Here's a script that automatically pauses underperforming ads every 14 days. And you see that it actually is able to code as well. And typically, I've tried this in the past, those scripts tend to be doing pretty well. Like I have two, three scripts that I tested with that and it actually worked. I have no idea what's going on there. I mean, I can briefly read things like, you know, JavaScript or HTML, CSS, whatever, but um, I could never write something like that by myself, right? And it really tells you like what to do. And it basically um, has like some parameters that you technically have to come up with yourself, right? So in this case, it basically defined sort of um, underperformers. You can see here, if it if an ad has received no clicks, no impressions or a click rate below 0.01%, it will be paused. That's not my definition of an underperforming ad, right? If you wanna, if you have a specific idea of what in this case an underperforming ad looks like to you, then you can tell ChatGPT that this is what you wanna do, right? You can tell ChatGPT, hey, an underperforming ad is if it's spent more than $50 or $100, depending on your niche, of course, and made no sale. For example, this is kind of random. That's still not how I define that. It's much more complex than that, but you could do something like this, and you could automate some areas of, of the business. This could technically also done by a rule, right? So this is nothing too special for a script, but you can do more in-depth reporting. You could tell uh, ChatGPT that it should build a Google Ads script that basically creates a Google sheet of your, let's say 30 worst, no, not you, Google. It should basically give you a Google sheet with like the 30 worst uh, worse keywords in your account or something like that, right? There are many ways you can use that. I'm not actively using scripts too much besides some basic things like checking landing pages, etc. But this is a very interesting way of using it. And if you can come up with a nice idea for a script that is missing in your particular business for your particular brand, then ChatGPT can help you do so. One thing you need to keep in mind here, ChatGPT is quite limited when it comes to how many lines it can write at once. So if you have a very complex script, at some point it will just stop, right? It will just stop um, writing and it will end and the prompt is over. So if you have a very complex one, you have to probably chunk it into multiple groups and then get the first chunk, the second chunk, the third one, but feel free to look around and see what you can do with it. And now last but not least, we have that you, it can help you solve basic mistakes and issues with your account. So let's say you go around and you have a question and you're not entirely sure how something works. You could Google it, but sometimes it's pretty difficult when it's a more complex topic. So what I thought about here is the following. I want to use device bit adjustments on multiple layers, not players, of my account campaign and ad group. How does it work in Google Ads and what do I have to keep in mind here? It's something that if you start out with, with Google Ads, probably you may ask yourself that question because you can define 
device bit adjustments on multiple layers. And actually what Google does, it, it multiplies those. So if you set a 10% bit adjustment uh, for desktop on, on the campaign level, and then another 10% on the ad group level, those will be multiplied, right? So it's increasing or it's decreasing depending on where you have like a positive and where you have like a negative. And now it should, now it's super slow. Actually, it has never been that slow for me. Um, device bit adjustments allow you to adjust your bits for specific devices, such as mobile devices, desktops, and tablets. In your Google Ads campaigns and ad groups, here's how it works. Now let's refresh the page again, because that's a bit too slow and they're experiencing high demand again. <clears throat> but by the way, the plus upgrade is just $20 a month, which I think is super fair for like full access and quicker responses and everything. So there we go. That looks a lot, a lot better. To use device bit adjustments on multiple layers, you can set them at the campaign level to apply to all ad groups within the campaign, then override them at the ad group level to make further adjustments. Keep in mind that they can affect the cost, blah, 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 and so on and so forth regularly. Actually, that's interesting because it didn't fully explain my final point, which is that they sort of build on top of each other and that you can stack up those different adjustments to further increase your bid. That was actually my intention. And this actually shows you how sometimes you cannot completely depend, of course, or actually oftentimes you cannot completely depend on ChatGPT because all that it said here is right but it didn't really, or at least that's not how I understood it, right? It didn't really tell you that those stack up and that you have to keep in mind that you cannot just, or that you shouldn't have multiple adjustments on multiple layers, and then it grows into like a double or triple bit. So that's now a good example of basically when you should question at least parts of that and why you shouldn't just use it for all your needs, like with any issue in regards to Google Ads, Googling the question still is very helpful in many cases. But these were basically just five very common ChatGPT um, use cases for Google Ads. Of course, there are a lot more. I've tried a whole bunch of things. If this is interesting for you, let me know in the comments. I might do a follow-up video on more ideas on how to use it. I also wanted to make a video on ChatGPT plus Bing because Microsoft intends to and actually started to already roll out ChatGPT into the Bing search engine. So if you want to, if you don't want to miss out on that, and if you want me to make another ChatGPT video, let me know in the comments. If you want us to help you grow your Google Ads account for your business, then make sure to check the link in the description or check my training if you want to learn it myself. I will update my training, the Google Ads Ecom PPC Academy in the future for a section with ChatGPT. GPT as well once I have, you know, incorporated it a lot more in my daily work. So with that being said, thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any Google Ads content for e-commerce. And I look forward to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.